Today we call the knife hands palm branches. In the ancient world, palm branches were a symbol of victory. For the Israelites in the Old Testament, the elegant strength and simplicity of this tree became a symbol of the just man or woman, the one in whom God's law triumphed. It also symbolized victory for the Romans. Palm trees were not made of Italy. And so when the Romans started conquering other nations in the Mediterranean, the generals brought back palm trees back to Rome as souvenirs of their victories. So the crowds waving palm branches as Jesus entered Jerusalem were declaring his victory. Today, we echo them, we join them, and we declare and celebrate Christ's victory. But what the heck is that victory? And how did Christ win it? It is the victory over original sin. Original sin was mankind's disobedience to God and obedience to the evil one. It shattered God's plan, let loose the scourge of evil, and gave the evil one a certain power over earth and society. Jesus, through his passion, death, and resurrection, reversed the disobedience of original sin by obeying his Father's will in spite of all the devil's attempts to thwart him. The betrayal of Judas, the abandonment of his apostles, the false accusations, the condemnation, the humiliation, the scourging and crying with thorns, the torture of crucifixion, all of these sufferings were the devil's attempt to say, to get Jesus to say no to his father. Just as he had gotten Adam and Eve to say no. But Jesus defeated the evil one. He continued to love, forgive, and obey through it all. And so he, unlike Adam, unlike every other person in history, can say, I have not rebelled. As it is stated in today's first reading that Christina read, his obedience establishes a beachhead in this world that is under the devil's sway. Jesus' passion is D-Day for the devil and liberation for us. This is the victory that we celebrate. This victory is symbolized by the donkey that Christ rode into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. The first symbolic meaning of the donkey shows us how Christ won his victory over sin and evil through humility. A donkey is a useful beast of earth, but not a glorious and impressive one. And that's exactly like the Christian value of humility, by which we lower ourselves in order to help raise up others. And this is what Jesus did. As St. Paul tells us in today's second reading, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming a human likeness. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. God becoming man and taking up residence in the sinful world is the ultimate act of humility. Just as Jesus rides the humble donkey into the city of Jerusalem, so he rides the virtue of humility through this sinful world in order to blaze a path for us into heaven. He humbles himself to save us out of love. The second symbolic meaning is more directly connected to Christ's victory. Again, in ancient times, commanders who were engaged in battle and conquest would ride on the most efficient beasts of war. Strong, fast, powerful war horses. But after the battle was won, the victorious general would parade into the city riding on, and he gets it. A donkey. That is why the people shouted up when they saw Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. It was a sign for them, and it meant that Jesus had conquered and he was bringing peace into the kingdom. Although they had no idea what the heck the kingdom was. Everything in today's liturgy, even the humble donkey, 
shines brilliantly with the aura of Christ's amazing victory over evil and original sin. Today and throughout this Holy Week, we should give thanks to God for the great things He has done for us. Reflect on His saving love, His renewal, our commitment to follow Him. But the victory is too wonderful to keep to ourselves. There are still people who don't know about Christ. They don't know. They're afraid to follow Him. Or they have been hurt or marginalized or ostracized by those who are supposed to be His representatives here on earth because maybe they're divorced or because they love someone of the same sex or have gone against the grain of the institutional church in some way. They don't know that their sufferings in this fallen world can become meaningful and fruitful if they are united to Christ's sufferings. There are two ways that you and I can make this Holy Week truly holy, not only for ourselves, but for those around us. And it's by our words and deeds. By our words, we should not be afraid to speak of Christ and the meaning of his passion. We are his messengers. He wants us to reach out to others <coughs> through us. Who needs to hear his message? Maybe we can think of someone right away. Maybe we just need to be ready and willing so that the Holy Spirit can work through us. And by our deeds, this week, we can imagine Christ's passion by doing what he did. By sharing our neighbor's burdens. By taking upon ourselves the crosses of others. It may be as simple as inviting someone to come and participate in the Holy Week liturgies, which will be as you know Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it becomes the commercial, at 7.30. Today, on this day when we celebrate the victory of Christ's love, let's ask Christ to show us what to do and let us promise him that we will not keep the victory to ourselves, but we're going to carry that palm branch not only in church, but everywhere we go, by being true messengers of his life. I was 
car and have my night in the gym and Anthony also took a trial to tour and was out. This whole week was for a trade. You know, and then you had the stations of the cross, Jesus fell at 39, uh, and the seven last words, what is it? And I can't think of a guy's name that wrote the book about how painful it would be if the nail went through your hand, you couldn't do it, it went through your wrist level up. By the way, I might mention that that picture is a show of terror for me. Right. Um, if you look at Mark that we just read, Mark summarizes the entire crucifixion in four words. And he was crucified. There ain't no emphasis on what was involved physically. And along with what you say, Anthony, uh, you go through the four accounts from the uh, agony to the, through the crucifixion, there is no emphasis, hardly at all, on Jesus' divinity. Everything is his humanity, with one exception, when Peter, or whoever, whacks off that guy's ear, he fixes it. You know, so, and I doubt he had some kind of magic style, but anyway, that's the only reference of divinity. And uh, you know, the things he went through, he had one of his BFFs, you know, walk out on the post supper he was throwing. Uh, you had Peter say he didn't even know him. This is the guy who was going to leave the whole movement. You have in fear in the garden. These are all human emotions. These are things we have. And as humans, we can become part of, we can be part of the kingdom. The kingdom is here and now. And uh, he showed us that as humans, yes, we can walk through these things.
for all the intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. Lord Jesus, let the flow of your kindness and light come down on all of us and bring us your lasting joy and happiness in your kingdom that will stand forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Number 734. Give glory in the cross. Your glory. 
We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father of all, and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Though he was sinless, he suffered willingly for sinners. Though innocent, he accepted them to save the guilty. By dying, he destroyed our sins. By rising, he has raised us up to holiness of life. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels in this song of joy. Holy, holy, holy. Oh. Uh-huh. 
I know there's a lot of us here, but if we can try to come on around and join hands for the other vote.